praises to the creator of this whole universe and every single living creature in it. Let me tell you a little bit about this God, bro, so you understand who you're dealing with. He's a God that hates injustice. He's a God that hates oppression. He's a God that hates ungratefulness. He's a God that hates sex crimes. He's a God that hates idolatry. All those things I just mentioned, he hates them. You understand? Because they take his children away from him. He would also hate somebody that tried to take your children away from you. Here, they try to make your kid wear a mask. You're ready to kill somebody. You understand? He's a God that will do everything for you. I can't even say everything in his power because everything is in his power. You understand? Let me tell you guys, man. You don't understand, man. Listen, I told somebody the other day, you're looking for a job, right? And you only have two options. You cannot do anything else. You can either sit at home, pray with tears that you get a job, or go take your resume and go to every place around where you live and give it, give out your resume. If you really knew the power of God, it wouldn't even be a question. You right away would pick praying to God to help me find a job. You know why? And you're going to tell me, no, you have to make no resume. And God's not going to come from heaven and make you come. What are you talking about? This is ridiculous. You're confused. And I'll sit back and look at this person. I'm thinking to myself, he doesn't know who God is. If you knew who God was, not only can he get you the job, he can make you the president of that job. What are you talking about? Come on, man. You guys are not understanding. Listen, this is to my nation, the Jews. Let me tell you who God is, bro. He took you out of Egypt with a mighty and strong hand. He created the earth. He created the sun. The sun that you go to the beach, kick back, chill, listen to your music, and enjoy. He gave you that. You, you appreciate it for that? You're not. You're not. If you were appreciative for that, you pray in the morning. If you were appreciative for that, every second you were alive, you would understand that he's around and that he's watching and that he gave you so much. And why would you ever want to hurt somebody that gave you that much? I mean, can you imagine somebody gave you everything? You were a kid. Everything that you said, Yo, I want this, I want that, this guy gave you. I don't know whoever. It could be whoever. Everything you got. And to him, you are grateful? Come on, bro. Come on. Everybody in your life would tell you, yo, to him, he's not even your father, but you should be more grateful to him than your father. He did more for you than your father. You understand? And you're going to be ungrateful to him? You tripping. That's when you're going to really catch this. And when I was a kid, I disrespected my mother one time, and my father slapped me in the face so hard, I was bleeding from the lip. So I looked at him, and I was like, yo, are you kidding me? You know, like you went too far and he looked at me like I didn't go far enough. You know what I mean? Really, I should have punched you in your eye. That's what I really should have did. And I will guarantee you one thing. After that day, I thought a billion times before I spoke to my mother the wrong way. Remember that for eternity. And you're going to tell me, no, no, it's too rough. Uh, It's not too rough. With a rough kid, you get rough. That's why I never liked this statement, tough love. No, love is supposed to be soft. And gentle and beautiful and peaceful. Tough is tough. It's not tough love. Just be tough. He's tough. He needs tough. Not tough love. He's nice. You give him love. That's it. That's how Hashem is. What do you think? You see a dude rob a family, laugh in their face, and move into their house. And you're thinking that this guy just got away with murder. How many times did people say in this world, oh, he got away with murder? Got away with murder? You don't get away, bro, for washing without eating bread. What are you talking about? Get away with murder. That will never happen. That will never happen. And you don't have to tell the world that God doesn't slumber or sleep. (laughs) Even if he was, God forbid, to take a nap, you still get busted. You understand? What do you think, B? You understand who you're dealing with? Let me give it to you like this. You're dealing with someone that knows everything. You cannot lie to him. You cannot trick him. You cannot fool him. You cannot outsmart him. You cannot beat him up. You cannot run away from him. You cannot attack him. You cannot come from behind and this and hire other people to come with you to destroy him. You can bring everything you want in the universe plus infinity. 
and he'll flick you like a fly. You understand? He'll flick you like a fly. That's what he's going to do to you. Stop playing with God, bro. And to the Jews, man, let me just tell you, yo, Shabbat, you understand what Shabbat is, bro? You don't understand. I told somebody the other day, if you understood the importance of Shabbat, I guarantee you, you would keep Shabbat. Guarantee you, you would keep Shabbat. That's like Hashem's most favorite thing in the universe, bro, is Shabbat. Even before the nation of Israel. Yes, because if the nation of Israel doesn't have Shabbat, what is the nation of Israel? That's how important Shabbat is to Hashem. It's like his, I don't know, how can you explain it? <clears throat> like his wife. That's a beautiful Hashem, I appreciate that. That's Hashem's wife. That's Hashem's wife. Shabbat is Hashem's wife. Now you're going to go disrespect God's wife? God, the one that did everything for you. And I know some people, good looking people, bro. You look in the mirror, you see a good looking person. For that alone, you should be grateful. But nah, I think you're grateful for that. You're not even grateful for the banana you're eating right now. What are you talking about, bro? And if you're good looking and you're eating a banana right now, maybe that's from Hashem to let you know, bro. Put your ego low. Let it go. And let God run the show. I really like saying that. Let me say that again. You know I like saying that? Because I wash my brain from all the garbage I grew up with. Nah, you're not going to disrespect me. Oh, you stepped on my sneaker. Let's fight. <laughs> the heck out of here with this garbage, yo. See, that's what it is, man. When you understand and know who God is and you know who his Torah is, you know that the whole goal of life is to be humble. That's it. It's very simple. Humble. Keep Shabbat humble. You respect your mom. Humble. You'll be a giant in heaven if you're humble. That's why I have a book. I wish I was a nerd. Why? Well, why you want to be a nerd? Nerds. They get made fun of. They're like, oh, they're weak. They're wimps. They're this. They'll never get a girl. This, that. <laughs> in this fake world, you right. A nerd is a herb over here, but in heaven, he's a king. You know what I mean? But always remember, there's only one king of kings. This king will vanquish all other kings. Man, you know what I like so much that made me laugh? When Moshe Rabbeinu was talking to Pharaoh during the ten plagues, Pharaoh said to Moshe Rabbeinu, Who is this God? Who is this God? Like, you know, trying to disrespect God. God forbid a billion times. Bugging if you do that. But he said, Who is this God? Where does he come from? What did he do? What's his name? Who follows him? Has he done anything I've ever heard of? <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, yo, he gave you life, bro. Are you crazy? Man, I don't even want to tell you, bro. <laughs> That's why Moshe Rabbeinu the most humble. You see, somebody like me, I would have probably taken the staff. I would have banged it on the floor and said, are you crazy? Who is this God? You're breathing right now because of this God. But, nah, that's not the way of God. The way of God is how Moshe Rabbeinu did it. All he does is just look up to Shamayim. Stretch out the staff Sometimes he made Aaron Stretch out the staff You know why? Because the water Saved his life So he wasn't allowed To touch the water When it turned to Dam You understand? Because they used to Worship the Dam And I told my mother Something beautiful today And this is so deep This is the Torah The Torah is deeper Than I don't care bro Anything you could Ever bring in front Of my face Because the Torah Is life You understand? And psychology Combined And that's when You go deep so I told my mother, I said, you know what it says in the Torah? For God forbid a person rapes an animal, that they kill him and the animal. So most people right away, they're like, why would you kill the animal? Like, that's not justice. If God is the God of justice, why are you killing the animal? So I tell them, listen, think, think for a second. You're having mercy on the animal, but you're not even thinking about God. So he said, what do you mean thinking about God? I say, no, you don't understand. If this animal is allowed to live and is not killed... What's going to happen is a huge desecration of God's name because people are going to know a Jew did a dirty act with this animal. So to protect the honor of God's name, he kills the animal. You understand? That's deep. And I'll give you another example where he does it. Somebody would say, why did they kill the animals in Egypt? The animals suffered, no? They had to get killed. They died along with the people in the plagues. What goes on? I'll tell you what goes on. That when they started to use those animals as gods, God says, no, I'm the only God. So since it's a desecration to my name that they made a sheep a God, I'm going to kill the animals as well. That is deep. And even that is justice. 
Because maybe some of these animals, I don't know, bro. A lot of this reincarnation is so deep. You would never understand how a dude could come back in a sheep. Go to sleep, you know what I mean? <laughs> maybe you have a dream and they bring it down to you. But listen, I'll give it to you deep right now, man. I'll give it to you deep right now. Listen to me. Just follow me, man. Just don't go nuts with what I'm about to say. Just listen with respect. And then after I'm done, if you don't agree with me, we good. All right, cool. Cool, I appreciate that. All right, listen. Gay people come back reincarnated in dogs. Now, first of all, when you look at your dog, you look at them in the eye, they look human. We all know it. You see the connection that people have with dogs. It's not normal. Right, so we understand it? Great. I never see somebody like that with an iguana. You'll see one or two. But not like with a dog. A dog, they're ready to die for this dog, bro. It's a connection that's very deep. So you'd say if God is going to reincarnate a gay person into an animal, why would he choose a dog? You know why a dog? Because it's all me that can make it me die. When they go have their act, they do it like a dog. It's disgusting. But I'm just, we have to talk. Because this is in the Torah. The Torah talks about homosexuality and how disgusting it's an abomination it's beyond gross it's not natural that's it that's before even the Torah then on top of it the morality the disgusting it ah, yeah, 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 yeah. even talking about it bro is dirty to talk about it crazy but let's think so they do it like a dog they're affectionate like dogs a lot of them can be very, like, egotistical, you understand? Because they come out, they feel proud, liberated, this, that. Yeah, look at the gay pride, pride parade. They're going to come with a flag of a rainbow, shove it in God's face, God forbid, partying and celebrating that they're gay. In Israel, in Jerusalem, are you, have you, yo, that to me is the greatest proof that the Satan is a genius, and which is God, because God made the Satan, you understand? He's the genius, he's the mega genius, but he made the Satan a genius, you know? To give him permission to play with his children. Why, why, why would somebody give somebody permission to punish and play with his children? Why? Because your kid is arrogant, your kid is smug, your kid has no respect, your kid is rude. Your kid couldn't care less about anybody else About his selfish self, you understand? That's why a father would do that Man, if I, not me Love you Hashem for teaching me how to speak But if there was a father in this world That had a son that was the biggest bully Spit on people, you know, whatever Just a nasty kid And he saw him in the park Bullying kids And if he was a real good father You know what he would do? He would get one of the kids Like a tough kid in the neighborhood To go beat him up and humble him. That's what a real good father would do. You tell me what you're talking. I'm gonna get somebody to beat up your kid. You're the worst father that ever lived. You should talk to him. You should give him all. Can you tell me we did that? The kid's not changing, bro. This kid is a nasty kid. What do you don't think? Their kids like this. They are. Oh, and you gotta break them sometimes. You know what I mean? Let them know, bro. Let them know that God is running the show, no matter how tough you are. Man, he will humble you with somebody to be even some little dude that doesn't even look tough. Could be the most amazing fighter in the universe. Can choke you out, bro, in front of your own fam. What you think? That's how you know there's a God. That's how you know there's a God. Like Rabbi Akiva said, when the water dropped into the stone and made a hole, that's when I knew there was a God. How could something so soft penetrate something so hard? You know how? Over time and pressure. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. That's how. You understand? This beat is really dope, yo. I like this beat a lot. Usually I don't make beats, you know, like talks, these kind of beats, but this one just has a special esoteric feel to it, like a spiritual feel. And I like that because the spirit opens up the spirit to let me hear it. You know what I mean? I like that. Almost want to rhyme right now, but I won't. Because. But actually, you know what? I could kick a quick rhyme about God. Let's see. Let's do it like this. All right, let's go. Yo, check out the flow win. The one who made the rain and the snow win. He be the one, yo, that sits on the throne in. And you busy giving love to a dog with the bone in. Did you pray to God? Did you thank him for the life you had? It's easy, not chick a hard. No, you couldn't care less in. You got money, but you never made a blessing. How could it be 
the ungratefulness I see You may God punish, choose real quick I be See, I start to catch in the flow When I know when I do it, how I do it Cold till they frozen You give cold, you get Yo, it back, that's how it go Measure for the measure facts That's the way in There's two sections in hell One's hot, the other's where the devil playing Where it's cold, where it's freezing, dude Yo, for the people that we cold, you see You see it's easy Breaking down the cipher rhyme In the middle of a speech And who could do that when they teaching Man, the ego big, put it down And stop acting like a clown I like that Alright, listen, you know, that just reminded me something dope I didn't even think that freestyle was that good But I'ma keep it Because it's live and it's real, you know what I mean? That's why Reminded me of the prophet Shmuel That he announced I'm the seer <laughs> So I should have said Oh yeah you're the seer You're gonna go around Like you're the big shot The big prophet He said now go tell me Which one of Ishai's sons Is uh, the next mach- is the next king Yala tell me He didn't know He went to all the sons None of them And then finally he realized The only son was this one in the back With the sheep The little shepherd boy That nobody even liked <laughs> King David such a amazing Scarf mind. One, the way he wrote about Hashem, bro, is beautiful, bro. Beautiful. If you listen to my talks, I quote Psalms a lot. You know, just to Mamla West. That's why I love that book so much. It has so many sources. My God. The Rishonim, the Achronim, the Gemara. This opinion, that, the Ramchal. They'll take different opinions from different sex that didn't even agree with each other bro but if it's knowledge and it's deep it's in there bro trust me when I tell you man I could t- <laughs> Ooh, wow 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 that's what I would gift my kid yo like that yo just the, the whole series just soak this up and I promise you you become a giant yo your Shabbat will be better you'll eat kosher better You'll be more respectful to your parents. You'll learn the word of God on such a deep level, yo. Like, I'll give you an example here. I'm just going to give you just... I like this because it's just from the top, free-flowing. I'll give you just an example, something I learned from this book. That's not... You're gonna, you might not even get that impressed with it, but I'm going to just tell you how deep it is. It says in the Torah, Aster, Astir, Panai, there will come a day... Where I will turn my face Basically telling the Jews I'm going to turn my face to your suffering Think about that yo So the question was asked I think it was some rabbi in the holocaust Who called out and said Why Hashem How can it be Aster Aster Panay That you're going to turn your face on us So you know what Hashem answered him The only reason I turned my face on you Is because you turned your face to me that's what Hashem told him. You understand? It's deep, bro. Deep. Think about it for a second. It's all measure for measure. You're going to drive around on a motorcycle at 6.35 in the morning every day for three months? Waking up every single person on that strip? You're going to get punished. Probably with your motorcycle. And probably with your ears, bro. Because that's where the sin emanates from. You understand? Hashem, I love you so much that you give me the power, the strength, and the ability to speak your word because it's so beautiful, yo. (laughs) You wouldn't even believe me if I told you I was in a spaceship right now in the middle of space, floating, loving life next to God. Of course I'm not. I'm in my crib chilling. (laughs) But I promise you, bro, my spirit feels hot up in heaven right now. And that's such a beautiful feeling, bro. How can I intimate to you how I feel right now? I cannot. I cannot. I cannot, bro. I can't, actually. I can't. I just did. <laughs> that's how I feel. I feel like I'm in the heavens right now chilling because that's how the word of God will make a soul feel, bro. It will lift your soul up to heaven, bro. That's what I tell my mom. I said, okay, I got to go. I love you. I'm about to blast off to heaven Word up man Because when I study the Torah That's exactly how I feel Like I'm in heaven It's a feeling of such Satanist But I don't explain it bro It's like you're so sated You're so satisfied You're lacking 
nothing. You feel good. You feel calm. You feel? And no, I. And that's what Hashem wants me to tell you right now. So simple, but so deep. Noach Matzachet Be'enei Hashem Moses He also found favor in the eyes of Hashem But we're talking about Noach Matzachet Be'enei Hashem That's what it says about Noach So the question is How do you find favor? How do you find Chen Be'enei Hashem? How do you find favor in the eyes of God? The answer is in the name Noach Yebe Noach be peaceful. Be at comfort with yourself. Be calm. Be trusting. Be loving. Be Benoach. And the most beautiful thing is if you take the letters in the name Noach and flip them, what does it spell? Chen. Favor. Noach. That's a Chen. Bene Hashem. If you want to find favor in the eyes of God, Put your ego down and make peace. That's the message that Hashem chose for me to give to the universe. And I'm proud to bring it. You understand? If you want to really find favor in the eyes of God and get close to God, I'm telling you, do that. And you're going to be blessed a billion times, bro. Because when a person has something to say and they keep their mouth shut, they get blessed. And it's a lot. Because Hashem loves when you trust Him. Hashem, can you imagine... If your father had the ability to do something for you and he told you he was going to do it and you doubted him. You know how it would insult your father. But he knows he can do it. He's telling you, bro, I got you, bro. I got you. So if you say, you know what, dad, whatever you say, I believe. Because you came through for me so many times in the past. The father would be more likely to do it for him. When you trust Hashem, you show him respect. When you trust Hashem, you show Him love. When you trust Hashem, <laughs> you're a king in this world, bro. I promise you. Just like Hashem told the Jews, bro, if you behave, I will make you fathers and mothers to kings, to nobles, to princes, to royalty. But if you forsake me and you leave me, then I'll leave you in the hands of the Goyim. And when I get the Goyim hot and bothered, <laughs> They're not pleasant to you. They'll attack you. They'll jump up and go nuts. You understand? You know what's crazy? The Jews blame anti-Semitism on the Goyim. When in actuality, they should blame it on themselves. The only reason that Hashem makes a Goyim be anti-Semitic towards a Jew is because the sins of the Jews brings that upon us. Don't you understand how it works? We always focus on the wrong thing. No, we're gonna focus. Oh, he he drew a he drew a he drew a Jewish star on a grave. Oh no, he drew a swastika on a grave. And you say, that's disgusting. May Hashem destroy him for that for eternity. But let's think: Why would Hashem allow a goy to disrespect this great? Because it's a message to us. I'm allowing this to happen because you're not doing what I'm telling you to do. You're forsaking me again, like you did in the past. You got fat and kicked. You got comfortable. You know it's amazing. Hashem's mercy. <laughs> I don't even know how to really say this, but let me put it to you like this. The fact that Hashem's mercy is so deep and so beautiful, it almost makes the people believe that I'm getting away with it. Like it's crazy. So it's like you would think it's not in God's best interest to be merciful. Wrong. It is. You know why? Because when He's merciful, He exposes you. For 50 years, you're going to be ungrateful to God? Get out of here, bro. Get out of here. It's not going to fly, you know what I mean? Not here and not in any other universe. The justice, the truth, is always followed by the peace. Remember that. Put that deep in your brain, you know what I mean? (laughs) Woo, Hashem, I like this talk and I love this beat. And I love you more than everything. Stand up on your feet if you love God and let him know, man. Look up to heaven. Or up, man. You know what I mean? If I'm in a place, God forbid, with a modest woman, and I don't mean something too much, but even in public, I see some girl, God forbid, you know, dressed sexy right away. You got to turn your eyes right away, bro, bro. You don't understand, bro. If you a dude, I'm giving you the greatest advice that ever lived. Out of sight, out of mind. 
You don't ever want to focus on that because it leads to sins. And I was thinking about getting my tongue twisted to talk about women too much. You know what I mean? For real. And on that note, Hashem, we're going to end it by praising you like we always do. Love you, Hashem. <laughs>